Mr. Marvin Kleinfeld, who was born on September 27, 1942, in Lebanon, PA. He enlisted into the Air Force during the pre-Vietnam War and was ranked A2C. He has two half-sisters, five half-brothers, and one blood brother. His biological parents are Harold Kleinfelter and April Siegfried. His stepfather was John Siegfried. Before Kleinfelter went into the service, he graduated high school in June 1960 and then enlisted a week later. No one in his family enlisted or was drafted into the war. The reasons Kleinfelter joined the military were simple. He wanted to go to college, but his family didn't have the finances. Kleinfelter chose to join the Air Force because he took an aptitude test before he joined and it gave him a high rating. The start of going into the Air Force is basic training. First, he went to Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. He stayed there for about four weeks. The training was originally supposed to be eight weeks, but he was supposed to get a higher training, so he went and finished it in Keys Hill Air Force Base in Mississippi. When he went through basic training, he learned many new skills. He learned to be more organized and to do more planning. He also learned some of the skills he had during technical school. Although Kleinfelter learned many things from basic training, it was still very hard. He said it was very physical and demanding. When he went, the temperature in San Antonio, Texas was about 108 degrees. After basic training, he had to get special training and learn more about what he would be doing. The special training was in Keys Hill, Mississippi for 11 months. Kleinfelter said it was geared more towards what he was going to be doing, which in his case was radio relay. When he first started working the radio, his hours and days off were messed up. Sometimes he had 12-hour shifts and only two days off, and other times he had three eight-hour shifts and normal time off. Kleinfelter's job was the repairman. They helped set up the machines, fix them, and maintain them. He worked at a secret communication center and helped maintain the equipment to make sure it was working when it needed to be. For Kleinfelter, it was different trying to adapt to the new life. He said he was used to being able to do what he wanted to do, but now he had to do what other people wanted him to do. Also, it was difficult at times because he was just a 17-year-old kid trying to get used to a new way of life. After he got used to the way of life, his job on a daily basis was to mainly monitor machines and to make sure all the equipment was working right. If the equipment wasn't working right, they would have to go through a series of checks and troubleshooting to see what the problem was. Sometimes they had to do tests on the radio with people watching them, like high-ranking officials. One time, Kleinfelter had to set up a communication link. All three pieces they were working with were identical. The plan didn't go exactly how it was supposed to go. He said that everything worked out in the end, but it was very stressful at the time because of the high-ranking officials. If any part of the radio would break, they would have to take it out of service and replace it with a new part. It took only one person to operate the radio and to send messages to other radios. To Kleinfelter, it wasn't hard to operate the relay because he had all the right training that he needed, but if he didn't have the training, it would be hard. Although operating the radio was easy, it wasn't easy to send out messages with bad terrain. The biggest problem they had with sending out messages was with birds flying into the radar antennas. It often knocked the equipment offline and, they, and he had to bring it back. In Kleinfelter's time of service, he made many good friends. He started out by going into the service with a good friend of his that lived close to him but they ended up going their separate ways. He met some people when he went to Europe that he ended up staying in contact with even after the service. Having friends made, it, made a difference because it was hard to stay in touch with family. It was the 1960s, so there wasn't any internet. The only way for Kleinfelters to communicate back home was by writing letters, and they usually took many weeks to get, the, to, get to where they were supposed to go if they even got there. Since communicating was hard, it was nice to go home. They had asked me to re-enlist, but I didn't want to, so I went back to New Jersey and I would go home from there. Going home was difficult because he got used to the military life and then he had to get back to the way he used to live. It was also hard for him because the friends he used to have were mostly all married or moved away and the family he left was four years older. The biggest problem he had was getting used to the food because he was so used to the food he was eating over there. Also, a hard part of being home for him was getting a job because the U.S. didn't have the same technology. Many soldiers have to get help with their emotions when they come home from war, but Kleinfelter didn't. He said it wasn't the same as it is now when soldiers come home. Kleinfelter had to travel to many places during his time of service. One place he went to was Germany. His transportation there was by airplane. He worked the radio over in Germany, and he said that it was a good experience. It gave him a good education and a foundation with computers, which ended up being his career. Kleinfelter said he never regretted joining the Air Force, and if he had the chance to, 
changed his branch, he wouldn't have. He had many memorable times during his service, such as seeing JFK and seeing concentration camps. Throughout his time in service, traveling wasn't hard. Kleinfelter enjoyed traveling in his time of service. However, he was on the move a lot. Kleinfelter had said that the longest time that he was in one place before traveling to another was two months. Kleinfelter then continued to tell us about how it was hard to travel physically, sometimes because the roads were not near what they are today. After traveling, Kleinfelter said that there were many easier times and harder times. One of the harder times that he had to deal with was being thrown a firearm and be on red alert just like that. Also, when Kleinfelter would get thrown a firearm, he would have to be on constant guard and secure communication center. Then we continued to ask about extra training for Kleinfelter. When Kleinfelter was in the time of service, he would randomly have to get extra training on the radio. For Kleinfelter, it felt normal to randomly get pulled into training that could last for six weeks. When he was trained, it was on new parts that they got for the radios. After the six weeks were up of training, they would put Kleinfelter back into his station and had him help and teach the others on what to do with the new pieces for the radio. After they got the new pieces set up on the radios, they set them up at different communication links. One of the communication links was for John F. Kennedy when he toured Europe. Kleinfelter got the experience of being able to see and be at the communication link where Kennedy was staying. Kleinfelter also got to watch and help with the landing Kennedy's plane. We then started to talk about how Kleinfelter was entertained when and if they would be sitting around with some downtime. The way that Kleinfelter was entertained were little places on the base that were called day rooms. A day room was a room that one could go in and watch very limited TV. Also in the room, there was a pool table of board games and foosball type things to do if there was any downtime. How were you entertained? Um, different ways. Remember that most of the time we were on remote location. Um, sometimes we were near a base or near a USO. If we were near a base, uh, they had day rooms where they would have a television, uh, a pool table, uh, some other board games and uh, foosball, uh, things like that. When uh, we were on remote sites, uh, we had television sometimes, not always. Uh, radio stations was probably the, the most favorite pastime. When Kleinfelder got leave, which meant he could go home and come back, but only for a limited time, he was able to travel. Kleinfelder got to see Paris and Italy and a concentration camp from the Holocaust. When Kleinfelder went to Paris, he really enjoyed trying the different types of foods that they enjoyed over there. Then he also got to see some of Italy. While in Italy, he set up a communication link with the Italian government. When they got there, there was some trouble, though. The contract had not been finalized, so they had extra time that they set up a communication link for the educational center. After a while, the contract was not signed and they were sent back over the Italian Alps in a very small car. He also got to go to Macau on his leave. Macau was a camp from the Holocaust. Kleinfelder said when the people got gas, they were put in a giant oven being cremated. What were some memorable things that you saw in Germany? That I saw in Germany? Uh, one of the most memorable was uh, concentration camps that were used during World War II in uh, Dachau, uh, Germany. I, w I will always remember that one. Then the ashes had been put into what made Kleinfelder think was a silo. Kleinfelder then said how it was eye-opening to see how many people had been cremated to be able to fit in that many silos. Kleinfelder did not go home a few times, such as after his first four weeks of training while he was in Biloxi, Mississippi. Then he went back to Kashmir Air Force Base in Mississippi, and he had stayed there for 11 months to finish what he had left of his basic training. Then he attended technical school. After that, he got to come home again, but only for a short time because just like that, he had to go to Europe. There to stay for three months before he could come home again. Kleinfelder was able to wear his uniform home because at that time, it wasn't a big deal to wear home. I earned a good conduct medal, which means I didn't have any serious violations for a specified period of time. And I have a marksman medal, which is the accuracy of firing a, a weapon. After his time in service, he got to stay home. Kleinfelder had earned the good conduct medal. 
This medal was given to a soldier if they had any good, didn't have any serious violations for his service time. Also, he got the marksman medal. This was a medal that a soldier earned for carrying a weapon. Kleinfutter went back to school only after he was able to get a job to help with the pay. But he went back to school to help expand his technical background and get a good job. The schooling that he went back for ended up taking six years on computers and evening classes. Before Kleinfutter's schooling, he got a job as a clerk at a bargain store. But after schooling, he was able to get a Bethlehem Steel job. He worked there for 20 years before it shut down. But while he worked there, he was able to learn specific computer equipment, which he was able to use while working on other jobs. Kleinfelder had said that he had a collection of pictures. Most of them were slides, but he has pictures that he was in basic training with. He also has pictures of people that he went to technical training with. Most of the pictures that Marvin has, he said, were from when he was in Europe. He said that he tried to take pictures whenever he was traveling of landmarks and pretty areas that he would be in. He also had some photographs that are of John F. Kennedy and different parts of Germany. Luckily, they found people when they did because they had run out of food and water. At this point, the we were melting snow to drink because they were completely out of everything. They had also been going to the truck to get gas out of it to keep a fire going in the shack so they wouldn't freeze to death. After they found people to help them, they took the men to the hospital to make sure that they would be okay. Kleinfelder had to stay in the hospital for three days until he was finally okay to get back and come home.